Chapter 7 These are the instructions for the guilt offering, which is most holy. The animal sacrificed as a guilt offering must be slaughtered where the burnt offerings are slaughtered, and its blood sprinkled against the sides of the altar. The priest will then offer all its fat on the altar, including the fat from the tail, the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys with the fat around them near the loins, and the lobe of the liver, which is to be removed with the kidneys. The priests will burn these parts on the altar as an offering to the Lord made by fire. It is a guilt offering. All males from a priest's family may eat the meat, and it must be eaten in a sacred place, for it is most holy. For both the sin offering and the guilt offering, the meat of the sacrificed animal belongs to the priest in charge of the atonement ceremony. In the case of the whole burnt offering, the hide of the sacrificed animal also belongs to the priest. Any grain offering that has been baked in an oven, prepared in a pan, or cooked on a griddle belongs to the priest who presents it. All other grain offerings, whether flour mixed with olive oil or dry flour, are to be shared among all the priests and their sons. These are the instructions regarding the different kinds of peace offerings that may be presented to the Lord. If you present your peace offering as a thanksgiving offering, the usual animal sacrifice must be accompanied by various kinds of bread, loaves, wafers, and cakes, all made without yeast and soaked with olive oil. This peace offering of thanksgiving must also be accompanied by loaves of yeast bread. One of each kind of bread must be presented as a gift to the Lord. This bread will then belong to the priest who sprinkles the altar with blood from the sacrificed animal. The animal's meat must be eaten on the same day it is offered. None of it may be saved for the next morning. However, if you bring an offering to fulfill a vow or as a free will offering, the meat may be eaten on that same day, and whatever is left over may be eaten on the second day. But anything left over until the third day must be completely burned up. If any of the meat from this peace offering is eaten on the third day, it will not be accepted by the Lord. It will have no value as a sacrifice, and you will receive no credit for bringing it as an offering. By then the meat will be contaminated. If you eat it, you will have to answer for your sin. Meat that touches anything ceremonially unclean may not be eaten. It must be completely burned up. And as for meat that may be eaten, it may only be eaten by people who are ceremonially clean. Anyone who is ceremonially unclean but eats meat from a peace offering that was presented to the Lord must be cut off from the community. If anyone touches anything that is unclean, whether it is human defilement or an unclean animal, and then eats meat from the Lord's sacrifices, that person must be cut off from the community. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the Israelites these instructions. You must never eat fat, whether from oxen or sheep or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or killed by a wild animal may never be eaten, though it may be used for any other purpose. Anyone who eats fat from an offering given to the Lord by fire must be cut off from the community. Even in your homes you must never eat the blood of any bird or animal. Anyone who eats blood must be cut off from the community. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give these further instructions to the Israelites. When you present a peace offering to the Lord, bring part of it as a special gift to the Lord. Present it to him with your own hands as an offering given to the Lord by fire. Bring the fat of the animal together with the breast and present it to the Lord by lifting it up before him. Then the priests will burn the fat on the altar, but the breast will belong to Aaron and his sons. You are to give the right thigh of your peace offering to the priest as a gift. The right thigh must always be given to the priest who sprinkles the blood and offers the fat of the peace offering. For I have designated the breast and the right thigh for the priests. It is their regular share of the peace offerings brought by the Israelites. This is their share. It has been set apart for Aaron and his descendants from the offerings given to the Lord by fire from the time they were appointed to serve the Lord as priests. The Lord commanded that the Israelites were to give these portions to the priests as their regular share from the time of the priest's anointing. This regulation applies throughout the generations to come. These are the instructions for the whole burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, the ordination offering, and the peace offering. 
The Lord gave these instructions to Moses on Mount Sinai when he commanded the Israelites to bring their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai.